Um, and, and I was hoping that this may be our last Zoom meeting, that we would be able to meet in person in February. Uh, I don't, I don't think that it's, it's going to be um, possible. Um, I don't think, not, not that uh, Gwinnett County is open, we can meet, uh, but I don't think we, we would have enough people to make it worthwhile. Uh, so, let's see. let uh, Morning, Brooks. Hey, how are y'all? Good to see everybody. Uh, top of your head looks good. I'm going to get you the rest. There you go. <laughs> well, let's go back to the top of the head. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> I put the top on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I was talking about uh, meeting face to face. So, um, just a, a quick, a quick show of hands. Who would who would meet face to face in February if if we could? I mean, you know, if we opened it up. One, two, three. <clears throat> okay, three, four. Um, and I know a couple uh, others who aren't on here said that they would meet. But uh, to tell you the truth, I, I talked to Ann Jackson at um, Gwinnett County, and she uh, she says that they, the, the facility is still closed. They'll open it for, for us if we decide we want to meet. Um, can you all hear that? For just a second, let my clock's finish. There we go. Uh, just about. Okay. Um, so there, they would open the facility if we chose to to meet. I told Ann that, given the fact that that you know February is just around the corner, uh, the vaccine still isn't uh, uh, readily available. Uh, I'd like to cancel the February meeting unless. Oh, it, Great. Um, we need a vote. I don't. I don't think so. We just. We will just suspend the February meeting. She said that she would uh, give us another credit, so we'll have the two hundred and twenty-one dollar credit uh, for uh, for rent. And hopefully in April we can get back together. Um, I did. I did talk with them and about the um, Wi-Fi. They have Wi-Fi there. It's not not very good, and um, they suggested. And um, Randy, you might know. You uh, you'll probably be able to explain this better than I. Uh, a mobile hotspot. Um, that's what they recommended. The, the, we have a if we had a mobile hotspot, it would work better to have a simulcast Zoom meeting and face to face. It's I, my understanding is you just use your phone as a cell uh, a cell site or a Wi-Fi site. Oh, okay. not, I haven't done that for years. Well, I've never done it, uh, so <laughs> I wouldn't know how to how to do it. I'm sure somebody in the club would know how to do it, but. Uh, but like I say, since, since, uh, you know, the, the vaccine, I was hoping more people would have been vaccinated by now or by February. Um, I don't know if that's, if that's going to happen. So, uh, for an abundance of caution, if we will meet and plan to meet in April, uh, face to face, but of course we'll have more communication before then. Uh, is that okay with everyone? Sounds good. Right. Uh, there's one thing you may want to check. I think the April meeting is on Easter. No, I changed it to the week okay. after Easter. It's, okay. Um, I don't have it here in front of me, but. Yeah, uh, Robin wrote that on a note for me to be sure to tell everybody. Yeah, I, I thought of that, you know, unlike last year, I thought of that. <laughs> I thought of that when I was uh, giving Ann the, the list of dates. So. 
we're we're good with that. So and we, if, uh, you have a meeting and need mobile hotspot, I have one that uh, if I'm available for that meeting, I'll be more than happy to bring it with me. Oh, great. So then we could have a, a simulcast Zoom meeting and and um, face to face. So, but hopefully in April, you know, everyone will be vaccinated and you know we can have a we can have a face to face. Okay. Let's just keep our fingers crossed and and hope that it'll be done by then. Uh, we don't have any guests. Uh, or new members on that I know. We, uh, yeah. we have a couple members from other chapters, I see, at least uh, Pat Manley. Sure Hi, Pat. Oh, okay. We, we've we got your names, we but we can't see you. The Colsons are here. Colsons, Sherry, yeah, Pat Manley. Manley, and Jeff Parker. Pat Manley is the secretary for Chapter 42 in Knoxville. Hey, y'all. I'm Jeff Parker. Good to meet you. Good you to a, see you, Bob. Hi, Jeff. Jeff, are you a member of what? What chapter are you a member of? 42. 42. Well, and well, Chapter 139 and Chapter 124. Well, you need to add 24 to that. Yes, I do. I was gonna, but look what happened. <laughs> for for a mere twenty dollars, we will add you to it. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome to our, our meeting, and uh, hopefully, like I say, in April you can come to our actual meeting. God, I hope so, Dan. <laughs> welcome to Sherry Kitts too. Yeah, hey Sherry. Thank you. Uh, we can see you wave, but we didn't hear you if you said something. Yeah, so. I did. I had my mic. I usually turn my microphone off unless I have something to say, so I'm not background noisy. That's fine. Just nice to have you aboard. So. All right. Uh, let's see. We have any old business? I think the only thing we had was uh, was the Wi-Fi issue uh, situation. Oh. As far as Tuesday night, I called the lady, uh, Dr. Clark, and she says that the school board hasn't said anything about coming back as uh, the community school is not open. Uh, they're having their next meeting on the 20th, I think. So they may have some plan by then. I don't know. Well, I hope we can get back together on Tuesdays because I've got a couple clocks I need help for it. Uh, I've, I've got them in the box ready to bring, George. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Now, I, uh, I talked with Glenn uh, Alexander a uh, week before last, and he said that Tom Scott, uh, Hank Scott, uh, had stopped by his house. Uh, so he's doing apparently well enough, you know, to drive down to uh, Norcross and and um, he said he bought a clock over and he walked up the steps and stuff fine. So he, he must be doing much better than, than he was. Uh, I wish that he could be on the, on the call. But has anyone heard anything from him? Okay. See, I'm looking at my notes here for. Um, I think that's it for the for any updates and things. If, unless someone someone has something to add. Yeah, Dan, I have one thing. Uh, my <clears throat> my mail minutes for Al Orendorf. They keep getting returns, so he may have changed address. His email address. No, he's a snail mail. Oh. Locust Grove. He's uh, it's coming back as uh, unable to forward. You know, I I know his phone number was bad too at one time. So 
Norwell Court. That's, uh, Norwell Court in Locust Grove is what I've got. Yeah, that's correct. It's uh, 3619, maybe, Norwell Court. It's, it's 3043. Okay, I got a black line through it. Okay. I got an email address for him if you want to try it. Yeah, you want to send that to Bob? I don't have an email address for it. Well, it's actually al.orendorf at gmail. Oh, that's pretty original. <laughs> it works. <laughs> and, you know, the the, um, the post office may, I, I'm surprised that they sent it back to you. Um, I got an email from the electric company and the gas company that, um, the post office had notified them and said that they may not be able to get um, their their bills delivered in time. And I got my electric bill like a week after it was it was due. Fortunately, I, I also get it online. But um, I, I'm I'm shocked that the post office. I guess they can't carry that that one more envelope uh, above the five they carry each day. So. It gets too heavy in the truck. Anyway. I have a solution to the mail problem. I was concerned about my mail because I was getting delivery about three days a week. So I put up a locking mailboat mailbox. And since then I've gotten mail every single day. Well, I have a, a uh, I, I signed up for this uh, informed delivery where they email me a picture of my mail that I'm going to get each day. <clears throat> Unfortunately, most of the time it says, you're getting mail today, but we don't have any pictures. So, I don't. I, you Those, can't, you that can't just means you're out. getting ads. You're yeah. getting junk mail. At least the political stuff has stopped. For, Amen. For a little while. I'm uh, still getting it. Why? Prompt There's, delivery. Ah, well, you know, if they privatize the uh, post office completely, not just semi, um, that might help. So, anyway, I'll well, get off I'm my soap. Dan, can I'm you give it that address again? Because I think real. Bob's is different than what you said for Al. 3043? Yeah, he had 36618. 3618. Thank you. 3043. Okay. Uh, we got some more others uh, that joined. Uh, Dan and Jess. Are you there? Are you I'm here? here. Okay. And Stan Setch. Yeah, I'm here. Are you from uh, Knoxville? Knoxville? Yes. Good to have you. Thanks. You just disappeared, but... No, I'm up in your picture next to you. Oh, I see, I see you now. Okay. Dan and Jess? This is Dan Jeffries. I'm here. You've... Oh, okay. I, I can see your names, but not... Uh, can't see your face. All right. We got uh, Charles. Yes. You, you want to you want to give your um, treasurer's report? I can do that. It's, we had um, uh, Bernie's uh, son send us a check for dues for 2021. So we got one new member. Now, which means we got twenty dollars more than we had last time we had this report. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a oh, uh, we've got our insurance coming up. It's due in February. I got the uh, contract, but I hadn't got the bill yet. And the state of Georgia likes you to give them some money over you. Got that, and you know, outside of that, the. January 2021 is the same set for the $20, which means we have 
$16,963.11 in our checking account. We keep $50 cash for the uh, 50 50, which brings it to a total of 17 13 11. And that's pretty much an easy treasury report. Don't have much going on. Yeah. Um, you can. Um... You can uh, add, I'll send you a copy of the credit for, for February's uh, meeting, the 221. Right. And, uh, so we'll have that too. The, um, I sent you the an email for the uh, Georgia Secretary of State. Yeah, they sent me one also. So oh, yeah. okay. Well, good. Um, let's see if I have anything else here. I didn't figure there was no need to me trying to do that on the weekend, so. No, I, and it's not, I don't think it's due right away anyway. Uh, all right. Uh, the dues for 2021, uh, you might want to send an email out to those who haven't, who, who are due for 2021 and, and let them know that while yeah. we're, while we're not meeting in person, we still accept cash. Yeah, and, uh, hoping, hoping Bob could maybe do that, put that note in with his uh, mass mailings that he does for the, our newsletter would be, I don't know how to do the mass mailings, just to tell you the truth of the matter. Um, just, just give me the names of the people who need to. Uh, well, if you look at the, if you look at the uh, database, it'd be anybody that's got 2020 beside their name. 2021 was the ones that paid in 2020 and the ones that didn't pay in 2020 uh, were still, they were at 2019, but we moved everybody up a year. So they're at 2020, which means they owe 2021 dues. Um, Bob, you have access to the database, don't you? Yes, I do. You, you want to, you want to blurb? You want me to send you a blurb to put in there, or do you want to write it? I'll, I'll take any suggested order you might have. And I'll send you something, because I, you know, when I was treasurer, I did it. So I've, I've got something in my files here. And uh, I, I don't know if, if I ever gave that to Charles. Oh, yeah. I, well, I sent a letter out a couple of years ago to people who hadn't paid, but this is sort of a different situation. This is for dues that are due now, not past dues. Yeah. I mean, we're, I sent out people who were way late. And do you I know how many, do you know how many we have that, that need to pay? Uh, no, I don't have a number with me, but it's, I mean, I, I, I corrected the database and moved everybody up one year. So like I said, anybody that's got 2020 by their name needs to pay. All Everybody right. else moved to 21 that it paid in 2020. Okay. Uh, and, and, you and, know, and, yes. While we're talking about money, uh, usually annually we make a donation to uh, National and also to some money to the American Clock and Watch Museum. And I don't know what month we usually do did it in the past, but it's something to think about for this coming year. And I'm sure both organizations can use any donations they can get. Yeah, I know we, let me look back here and see if we, if I can see where we, we gave a donation to the to national. I think we've already, we did that. Uh, but, I don't remember, I don't remember, remember Charles? Charles? May have been a year ago by now, though. Yeah, you're right. I think it was the last time we were not maybe not the last time, but we approved it at a meeting. So it's been a year since we've had a meeting in person. And I never sent one to the other thing that he sent to Murph. I never heard of them before. Yeah, I don't think we generally give give money to them every year, but we have. I know we've given them uh, a donation in the past, but it's been a while, George. I think. Well, um, we used to sponsor. We used to sponsor a clock at the American Clock and Watch Museum, and we used to give about three hundred dollars a year to National, uh, as I remember. 
It's not like we're short of money. Right now. You can get short of money in a hurry if you're not careful. That's that's true. Um, but I think we I, I think we've been given national. I want to say 250 is what what I think. Well, and I'm going from memory, and that's not good. Um, but it seems to me that we gave them like 250. Um, so I, you, you want to make a motion that we, we give uh, an amount to them? Or do you want to wait till April? Oh, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion we donate $250 to National. I'll second. 250 to National. And we got a second, did I hear? Hey, Colson, seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? You know how I feel about that, but it's not democratic if someone, if it's unanimous, but it passes 250 to national. How about the uh, the other group? American Clock and Watch Museum. I'd make a motion that we donate $150 to them. Fifty to national. You have the address and all for them, George. But I don't well, I recall. I don't recall we have uh, ever given money to them. Me neither. Oh yeah, we used to do. We used to um, make a donation and sponsor a clock. Uh, I don't know if it was the clock that Bob Booth had donated to them, but we always years past donated to. American clock and watch museum. Uh, didn't to sponsor one of Ward's clocks. Who's clocks? Ward Francelon. Ward, Ward Francelon. That's right. Yes, that is correct. We used to always sponsor one of those on the Adopt a Clock program that they had, but I think that was a two fifty donation. But they move their clocks around so much, you don't even know if their clock, if one of Ward's is on display at any given time. So I think just a general mm -hmm. donation is fine. Yeah. All right. So anyway, that's that's my motion. Um, do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, uh, George. Can you can you provide the address and, and the uh, information to uh, Charles for that? Because I don't know I don't know who that is. Uh, okay, we haven't done it in the six or seven years I've been involved in this. Yeah, I don't I don't recall it when I was treasurer. How about I, do. I, I recall? So uh, yes, whether or not that. Uh, you can find the address and what I did. I don't know, but uh, yes, uh, we did it. And well, I was right. It was, you can get it was the address uh, from of, It was in honor of uh, Francelon, and we always sent a letter to uh, his wife out in Oregon. I don't even know if she's alive anymore. Oh, I, I remember that now. Yeah, and I sent I sent um, uh, a letter and a copy to the. Uh, to his wife in Oregon, and I never got a response. I also sent an email to her. Okay. So well, we, I and yeah, never we, got a response. We used to get responses, so I don't know if she may be incapacitated mm. now. Yeah. Yeah, I recall that now. One other thing uh, on money, uh, Charles, I have not gotten anything else from the insurance company. Uh, that bill would be due February 1st. Um, yeah, I got uh, the. Did you get the bill? I got the contract, but I ain't got the bill yet. Okay, yeah, because I had I had emailed you a, a copy of what I'd got, but I've got no bill yet. So, yeah, I guess I, I guess you just pay it off of what you got. I'll I'll call them up. If not, they're in marker also. Okay, good. I'll get. Well, if I remember correctly, you'll get the bill after the contract. If because uh, yeah, that well, we, we we've had that uh, 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 renewal thing um, for some weeks now, so 
I would have thought that we'd had to bill. Yeah. But who knows? As good as they are at addresses, they probably send it to Chicago. You're right, because I haven't gotten it either, so. Charles, did you have a way to write down the address? You can't eat that well, I guess. Hold on, let me get a pencil. Yeah, you may not remember, but uh, Bob Booth, who died recently, he donated the majority of his collection of early American clocks to the American Clock and Watch Museum. And Bob had a fantastic collection of clocks. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Charles. Yeah, can I get you to email it to me? It's a lot easier. Yes, I'm listening. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, we good? And and Brooks, um, I failed to ask how you were doing. You're looking good. So good. I, I I think I'm on the road to recovery. I before I had my heart attack, I was taking one pill a day. Now I'm taking nine. You know that tells you what you do. So, but uh, I appreciate all the calls. <laughs> The contacts, the emails, the cards, you know, were very nice. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. But I'm feeling feeling great. I'm ready to get fired up again, guys. All right. Yeah, we've got some clocks that need to be auctioned, so I'm you know, ready, ready to do it. Maybe in April. Well good. Aren't you glad you're out of politics? Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, that's the one thing I am glad I resigned when I did. Retired when I did. <laughs> it's a mess down there, boys. Girl. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I would, I wouldn't want to be in politics. No. I got that at the right time, the perfect time. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, George, you got a groaner for us? Uh, yes, I do. And sometimes I can't remember. I try to make note of when I, what groaners I've used, but. Uh, the first one here is, and I may have already d done this before, but what do you call a tense clock? And the answer is a clock that's all wound up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I know, <laughs> I know this is this is an encore because I know I used it some years ago. Uh, Seth Bulova, a night watchman at a clock and watch factory for 30 years. When he died, they found 21,000 watches and clocks in his home. Lawyers feared it would take years to wind up his estate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they are true groaners. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they are. <laughs> Well, it's good to see that the new, the new year hasn't hasn't improved the groaners any. <laughs> All right, uh, Mary, you've got the program to, today. I got a I got a lady whose husband has died, and she's loaded up with six clocks. She lives on Skater Mountain, North Carolina. Well, that's near Clayton, Georgia. Do we have anybody near Clayton, Georgia, that go by and see the clock and fix her, help her? And what, what does she want? Uh, she she want to sell them? Yes. Henry Newman is the closest, probably. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Henry. Yeah. Where, who? Henry Newman. He lives, he? he lives in Clayton. Okay, I'll tell and, her that. And I didn't hear you. Did does she want to sell them or what? what? She wants to get rid of them. She wants to sell them. Okay. All right. So I'll tell her to check with Henry. Maybe he can help her out. Yeah, he. Um, I mean, he's the one that lives closest. Um, but I don't know if he if he would give her a price for them or not. I'd be reluctant to give somebody a price. 
other than other than twenty dollars. That's usually my price. Twenty dollars are free. Five dollars. That's what I said. Five dollars. Well, if we have a, an April meeting, uh, they might be able to arrange Henry bringing them down to see if they auction. Yeah, that's the point. To try that. Yeah, uh, they boy, might get twenty-five for them. <laughs> Only if I get my stimulus check, George. <laughs> Go to me right now. All right. Uh, Mary, you're up. Okay. Well, with George's help, I am going to present two more of our collection from the mansion clocks for those uh, region members who may not be familiar. The uh, Chapter 24 has for many years now uh, been working in conjunction with the state to maintain its uh, vintage clocks. And how long ago now, George? About three years, maybe? Uh, no, we, st we started in 2006. Can you hear me? Yeah, 2006 in June, we started visiting the mansion and identifying and restoring the clocks. So and then it's been 14 years. And then I'm guessing it's about three years ago that George spearheaded the development of videos related to each of the clocks, um, utilizing the uh, STEM school up in Gwinnett County. And George, in conjunction with uh, probably Pete and many others, did the research on each of the clocks. So what we're going to show today are two of those videos about the clocks that are uh, in the mansion, the governor's mansion collection. So that's not the right one, pardon me. Um, I haven't done this in a little while. I have to share my screen first. Here we go. And let you all listen to this. So, okay, this is the uh, two, two uh, toll clocks. And it doesn't want to run. Let's try this. Here we go. Among the decorative arts located in the mansion are two similar French clocks. These artifacts fit within a category commonly known as toll painting or paintings on tin. Toll painting is the folk art of decorative painting on tin and wood objects and furniture. Most of us are familiar with decorated painted tin coffee pots known as tollware. Other frequently painted items include wooden blanket chests and furniture. In America, toll ware was a popular product of toll painting, particularly well known in areas of Pennsylvania by immigrants. Popularly known as the Pennsylvania Dutch, they are actually Deutsch or German. Both the black and ochre versions are hanging wall clocks. The more simpler of the two toll clocks in the mansion is painted black with painted yellow or gold trim. This clock is located in the lower level outside the mansion's manager's office. Based upon scratched names and dates on the eight-day brass spring driven movements front plate, which reads Durand 15 December 1850 and 16 October 1853, the latter probably a service date, there is a good reason to believe the clock was manufactured circa 1850. Another date of 1898 is scratched on one of the mainsprings. The eight-day movement has a silk thread suspension and similar to other French movements of the era, it utilizes a count wheel to strike the hours on a bell. 
The front of the movement shows various levers, winding arbors, the fast slow adjuster, minute and hour wheels or gears. There are numerous examples of a wide variety of French toll clocks for sale online, all seemingly identified as mid 19th century. All the examples, along with the mansion clocks, have porcelain dials with fancy embossed bezels. The ochre painted model was found in the mansion attic, and it was discovered that the original eight day brass movement had been replaced with a battery operated quartz movement. Trying to restore it to near original condition, a search was mounted by Atlanta NAWCC chapter members to obtain an eight day brass movement that would fit the dial winding openings and would above all fit with its pendulum length into the tin case. Eventually, a suitable replacement was obtained from an out of state clock dealer and after some extensive modifications, it proved to be a suitable fit. The clock now hangs in the front bedroom on the main level. In spite of the number of surviving examples of these wall clocks, most, as in the mansion examples, are not signed and therefore we may never know where and by whom they were manufactured. However, several examples that are signed on the dial indicate they were manufactured in Paris. And I am deliberately letting the uh, credits run to give credit to the folks who were involved. Uh, of course, Pete being on our meeting today was obviously instrumental in that. And then what going to show a second one. This is going to be a little bit harder for me to bring up. So bear with me a second as I figure out how to do this. Pete, do you want to make a little comment on some of this while I get this this other one up and going? I think we had George, was it 11 clocks in the mansion? You had 10 clocks in the mansion. Uh, and the video we just saw, that movement that we acquired from out of state, I think it was up in Tennessee or Kentucky. But uh, Pete had to do a lot of work to get that clock to fit in that case. And there was just enough room for the pendulum. Um, but fortunately, the winding arbors matched. Pete, do you want to say anything more about that? We had, of, of course, the, the arbors matched, but that doesn't mean that the false plate matched and also we're very lucky that the pendulum bob, when the rate was adjusted, cleared the bottom of the case by uh, an eighth of an inch, maybe. So it, it just made it. And um, I'm sorry, I've got foam coming in that I can't do anything about. <laughs> there were, the toll clocks were all French movements, and the we went through every every one of them, and fortunately um, they were all repairable. And the knife edge suspension clock was probably the most difficult. And, um, um. Pete, I can hardly hear you. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I can fix that. There we go. Um, as I said, the knife edge suspension was probably the most difficult of the clocks. Um, first of all, because I didn't understand how it worked and had to free up the actual blade of the knife edge. Um, the rest of them, they're just fine French clocks, very fine pivots, thick plates. Um, extremely similar. For some reason, people don't care to work on the French clocks because of the fine pivots, but um, they're, they're very nice mechanisms. Uh, we had um, 
some American clocks in there too, with banjo clocks. And they were interesting in, in themselves. One of them had, uh, after 200 years, um, had to have the depthing of the gears changed so that they, they meshed well enough to keep running, which is hard to explain. Um, hopefully they're, they're being taken care of still. I, I realize that the current occupants of the mansion uh, are not that interested in the clocks, but we will, I'm sure, keep, uh, keep them running if possible. Well, Georgia, well, yes. are you, uh, have you visited the mansion in recent times? No, we haven't. We haven't visited uh, since the pandemic started. I guess it was maybe a year ago. Okay. And when we were there the last time, I think Charles, you were there with us and um, um, Bill Kanak and uh, Chris and we, that black mantle clock, I mean, I'm sorry, the black toll clock, we moved from the front bedroom to the family sitting room and moved the Waterbury clock from upstairs from the aide de camp room to the front bedroom. I think I mentioned the last meeting when we showed that Waterbury clock video that the aide de camp room has been totally transformed into a room, sort of a playroom, a hangout room for the Kemp daughters, the three daughters. So all of the antique furniture, including that Waterbury clock have been moved out of the aide de camp room. So the Waterbury banjo is now in the front bedroom down on the main living area. So uh, anyway. George, they've stopped, they don't run any of them. I don't think they stopped them all, I understand. That, that they don't. They I don't, believe so, yeah. They, they don't hear any of them striking. Yeah. So they stopped, even the grandfather, they stopped them all, yeah. They're not very antique oriented. No. <laughs> well, ju judging from the way the, the politics have been going, uh, maybe the new governor will will have a different approach to him. Yes, yes. Yeah. Better, better watch what you wish for, Dan. Oh, I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that it may not be Kemp again. But, yeah. uh, and, well, and I'm not sure that they probably, probably, George, they probably wouldn't even let you in to the uh, mansion with the COVID now. No, I was thinking about giving them a call. Maybe I will this week to see what's going on, but we're not going to be able to volunteer there, I'm sure, for quite a while, especially yeah. with all that's going on these days. But um, I'll check with, uh, hopefully, Linda, the, the lady that's at the desk there in the security area. If Linda's still there, I can talk to her or I'll get a hold of Kat, who's the manager at the mansion, and talk to her. I understand the two in the capital, the one in the appropriation, and the, I understand the go they're still running. Uh, the guys that keep them wound, they, they're able to keep them going. I think they're fine. Good. Good. Yep. Well, I'm also going to show a second video here. Uh, this is, this um, is. As soon as I figure out which one it is. Let me try this again. Well, we'll go at it this way. I am sorry, I'm struggling with this. This is the second one, well, here we go, on the second video. See it, Mary. You're not showing it. You got the uh, leg. Okay, bear with me. Um, let me go back. Um, let me uh, I'm gonna get get that one up live and then go to it.
heading out for now. Y'all take care. Bye, Randy. Bye, Randy. Bye, Randy. Well, golly, I'm sorry, guys and gals. I had it. I had it live on my. I don't know why it's not showing because, oh shoot, now I just closed it out altogether. While you're doing that, uh, Pete, you mentioned that a lot of people don't like to work on French clocks because of the just real fine pivots. Um, you know, I'm, I'm renowned for breaking pivots and, okay. and I've got several French clocks here that were given to me and and I've torn them down and cleaned them and put them back together and I'm not broken one pivot. But give me an American clock and I'll break every damn pivot in it. So, <laughs> I don't understand, but. Okay, let's see if I've got this going. It shows up on my other screen and now it's not showing on this one. This is very frustrating. This is Jim Colson. Go ahead. Oh. Okay, are you seeing this? No. No. Yes? No. no. You know, it, it, I can't explain this. Jerry, try, try saving it to your desktop and then opening the screen. I had it open. We're seeing the directory on your desktop, but do we're it not now. seeing the video. So if you open it up on your desktop, it should show. Yeah, and then I, but then I can't get back to you guys to do the share mm -hmm. screen. Oh, I do this a gazillion times and it doesn't want to work for me today. I don't know what I'm doing differently. Okay. Dan, your luck with fridge clocks, that's because of all those fridge words you use when you're working on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right there. <laughs> I, th I think, you know, I know that they're real small and, and fragile, so I, I think I'm just more careful with them. Yeah. I need to extend that to these American clocks. Well, the same thing happens when working on platform balances, where you've got 5,007 inch pivots and you're closing up the cocks on them, you make definitely sure that the pivot is sitting in the jewel before you start tightening down any screws. Yeah. Otherwise you hear this funny little tink <laughs> and you know exactly what tink means. <laughs> okay, I'm then, gonna give Then it... the French words come out. <laughs> That's right. All right, I'm gonna give this one more try, folks. There. There we go. You're getting it now. You have it. Give us some volume. Are you not hearing it? Yes. Now we yeah. are. Way to go, Mary. Over the course of history, artists have been enamored by the mythological character Diana, known as the goddess of the hunt the moon, and nature. Often depicted as a young woman dressed in a tunic with a quiver of arrows draped over her shoulder, Diana was also recognized as a protector of mothers and children. When French clockmakers working in the empire style of the early 1800s would look to literary heroes, historical figures, or allegorical characters, the goddess Diana was a source of inspiration for many. 
including Etienne Meunier Jr., a horologist to the Emperor Napoleon. Meunier studied under Abraham Louis Breguet, one of the most famous horologists of all time, who is credited with creating the Breguet Company, which is now the luxury watch division of the Swatch Watch Group. Meunier worked in Paris from 1810 to 1830 on the Rue Neuve des Petites Champs. The avenue was the setting for the Ballad of Bouillabaisse, written by William Thackeray, a British novelist and author. The Meunier clock that sits on the mantel of the formal dining room of the Georgia governor's mansion is a French bronze door, eight day brass movement, time and strike clock. The clock utilizes a count wheel, which allows a hammer to strike the appropriate hours and half hours on a bell. The clock also employs a calendar indicator using a separate hand that points to the day of the month on the porcelain dial. Like many other French clocks of the period, it has a silk thread suspension. The clock features a seated figure of Diana holding a dead bird. The friezes of the rectangular dais are molded with dogs attacking deer and flanked by foul trophies. At each end of the dais, there are anthemions flanked by griffins, a mythic creature with the head of an eagle and the body of a lion. As for the goddess Diana, the Greeks were so enamored with her, they built the temple of Diana in what is now modern day Turkey. It was rebuilt three times and was considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Okay. So once again, we need to thank those members uh, who were shown in the credits, who uh, made the restoration possible. And then George, Chris Gagan and, and Brooks put them together and uh, Jim Gwynn who did the narration there, uh, showing lots of the uh, work done by the group that included uh, Pete Schreiner. Uh, Mary, I'm still seeing your your screen. I don't, is this, I don't know what city that is. Well, actually that's Sydney, Australia. There you oh, go. it is. Okay. There we go. We're back. You know, every time I see these videos, I'm impressed at how professional Amen. it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think, you know, everybody involved really did a great job. And uh, I think that uh, what's the name of the school group that, that put them, that did the video itself? Gwinnett School of Mathematics, Science, and Technology. There you go. And, uh, uh, which, really, really which like them. by the way, that school was, uh, there was an article in the paper not too long ago that that school was picked as one of the best, the 10th best high schools in the country. And in the state of Georgia, it's the, considered the most, the best high school in the state of Georgia. Wow. 100%, 100% of their students usually get scholarships to college. They do well. Their they're, colleges are after them, so they do well. Wow. It, it's certainly a professional publication. Yeah. And Chris Geek and uh, they have a fantastic, uh, uh, what would you say, room for all of this video production. And we, you know, a bunch of us met with him multiple times working these things out. And uh, it was really a nice team effort. And Pete did a lot of that photography on these clocks, did a lot of the work on these clocks, did a lot of the labeling for us on these movements. So it was really a, Big team effort and, uh, and Jim, a lot of Jim's voiceover is great right too. I understand, Jim Gwynn. I understand several yeah. TV stations were after Jim after that. He did so well, you know. <laughs> good. <laughs> well, he did a good job. And, uh, yeah. I'm just pronouncing those Which, French names, so okay. I'm impressed. <laughs> well, while we were recording, um, uh, Jim would call a friend. 
and and go over the pronunciation of certain words. He practiced ahead of time, of course, but even to get the pronunciation correct, he would call a friend and while we were doing the recordings and uh, to get the pro proper pronunciation. So, it was, I mean, you know, it was just a fantastic, uh, fantastic experience. And uh, so, uh, it, like I say, we couldn't have done it without everybody's help. So, uh, which yeah, brings me to the point, at, which, which brings me to a, wanted to make a point uh, that Mary has, Mary Jones has taken over as our mm -hmm. VP. And um, I know Mary's gonna be looking for programs for show and tell for, uh, you know, all kinds of good stuff that we wanna have on our, on our Zoom calls. So it's gonna take people like you guys out there and ladies to come up with some good stuff for us to help Mary deliver some good programs. And uh, I know that a lot of people here have some interesting clocks that they could do show and tell on and particularly maybe subjects that uh, would help all of us learn in this process. I was also thinking about contacting National because I imagine they have, since we are doing this virtually, they may have some resources that we can tap into uh, prior to us going back to in-person meetings, at which point, of course, it'd be ideal to have an in-person speaker. Sure. Mary, the library has got a lot of good resources for that. Well, also, Mary, um, uh, they have the NAWCC on Vimeo, and there's programs, a lot of programs on that that you can draw into. I want to thank Mary too for the program on, and um, hats off to you. Technology's great when it works and it's very frustrating <laughs> when it doesn't. Yeah. I, I had the first video queued up. I think the problem was you can, I can only queue up one at a time. So I had to back up and yeah. You did a great job. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate that. This I, knew, is, this I knew you were the right vice president to have. So we have, uh, by the way, four more of the, of the videos. Uh, I guess Mary will be showing two of them maybe next time. And Excellent. We have, we have um, the George Washington clock. Um, we have the Samuel Whiting banjo clock. We have the Verdier French clock. And we have the, uh, the tall clock down in the lower level, the colonial clock. So... Uh, We've got four more videos. We had a total of eight videos. George, if any of the other chapters yes. in Mid South would like to use those videos, how would they obtain them? Oh, when the clocks for Atlanta. Uh, send a hundred dollars per. <laughs> no. <laughs> I knew okay, it. Okay, we'll be right there. <laughs> Didn't uh, we make these videos? Didn't we send a copy to National? They're online. Yes, they're, yeah, they can get, they can access them through Vimeo uh, on NAWCC. And uh, otherwise, I'm not sure how we would get them to them. Uh, uh, didn't, didn't we put them on, uh, or what are they called? What are these Travel things? Time. Yeah. Flash drives. Flash drives. Flash drives, yeah. Didn't you we put also, them on flash drives? We could also put them with our um, meeting minutes on YouTube. <clears throat> I'm sure that we could get a flash drive to anyone that wants to use them with a little advance notice. We did. Uh, we did. We, did we, are, flash drive. we are available online through National, so you can. Go, go directly electronically to national. Yeah. And, uh, Brooks, Brooks what, what did you say? How okay. many? George, we, met, we ordered 20 flash drives and we sold out in three minutes. So they were, they, we may want to get some more flash drives and make them available. So I'll get with Chris and see if he would, could do it. George, I'll get with Chris. And if you will, I'll order some more flash drives. 
Yeah, if we could do that, I think I think we ought to donate one to each each of the clubs in our, in our district. I mean, we talk about three bucks a piece. Yeah, they're not much. Yeah, we're just. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure the Knoxville Club would appreciate it. Absolutely, as well as Nashville, they're doing uh, Zooms as well, and um, as you did, inviting other chapter members from. The other Mid-South, this is a wonderful program and it might motivate people to contact their capitals. We were lamenting that the Kemp's weren't all that interested in clocks. Uh, I wonder if those videos, if somebody got them to them and uh, let them see it, whether or not they might take some interest in uh, and make uh, George and Chris and others more welcome down there. Good point. N nothing ventured. Well, we We've already given the mansion a, a, a flash drive with all the videos on them, all eight. That, yeah, but does do the Kemp's know it? Because uh, that was probably back well, when Sandra was there. Yeah, I haven't checked lately, but Kat, the manager, was going to put them on their website. Now, I don't know if she ever did. I never double checked on that. And they didn't you? express a lot of interest in the clocks from the beginning, so um, unfortunately. One of the members referred to it as the Beverly Hillbillies of the mansion, you know, so I don't know. <laughs> but you know, I bet you, I bet you you're right about the other uh, state capitals. I mean, they're, they're all of them, I bet, have antique clocks. Right. George, where is the uh, book with all the reference material, all the research, and as well as uh, Pete's pictures, I guess, are in that book? Uh, um, everything is at the, uh, in the governor's mansion manager's office. Uh, we've got at least two leaf, loose leaf binders with articles about all of the clocks, each of the clocks, including pictures of similar clocks made by the same makers. We have given them copies of the bulletins where our articles were printed, uh, including the capital clock, uh, the flash drives. Everything that we had uh, is there at the mansion with all the research we've done. Is that the only copy of the research that exists? Pretty much. I mean, it's all in one place. It would it would be interesting to see if they could put the videos on their website because that's something that goes with the mansion as opposed to necessarily going with the people in the mansion. You know, the mansion is managed by a the historical society. There's a group that manages the furniture and manages the mansion. What we may want to do is contact that group and see how how where they are of all this and get them tied into it, George. So how do we try to find out who that group is? That would be another place to try to have uh, all of the records stored. Yes, sir. I agree with you, Pete. You know, uh, friends of the mansion. Sandra Dill. Yeah, friends of the mansion. Yes. Friends of the mansion. Right. And they buy the furniture, they keep Sandra D. repair everything. Continuity Sandra. is a problem. Okay. We always have a problem with continuity. Sandra D. Anything. We'll never have anybody like Mrs. Purdue and Mrs. Deal. They they just embrace this thing completely, yeah. Miss Miss Deal and Miss uh, Purdue. Well, it just seems we're, we're, that uh, having only one copy of the documentation puts it a little bit at risk if it were to be misplaced or someone unknowingly tossed it out. It'd be a shame to lose all the documentation. But I think Brooks's idea, who, whoever is the overseeing entity, and of course, I do know they have a manager, but that person apparently changes that as well. Changes, it changes with, the with administrations, yeah. yes. If y'all remember, I ordered, I asked everybody to give me a copy 
of the bulletin that had the capital clock in it. The reason I did that is because three times we provided all this information to the governor in his office in the capital. And as the administration changed, they threw it away. So what I did, I took a copy and framed it and I got it hanging there and hopefully they'll let it stay there. They won't, you know, they won't move it. It's in a frame by the clock. So hopefully it's still there. Until they tear that wall down. And then... right, until, they, until Byron moves the clock again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the uh, thought of contacting the friends of the mansion is a good idea because they provide continuity. Right, yes, sir. Yeah, and, and who could do that? Judy, I just admire your silence. <laughs> <laughs> it speaks volumes, doesn't it? Bite your tongue. Who has, who has been in touch with Friends of the Mansion? We've heard about them. I don't know that we've had any direct contact. George, who is the, who is the manager of the mansion right now? Cat. Uh, Cat, Cat Satterfield. We could contact that person and they could get us in, they, that would be our contact, get them and they could give us the contacts for the other, yeah. If you know Cat, contact her and get the information and we can go from there. Or Judith, do you? Yes, I can. I can get the contact information for Cat, and good, also good, good, and also for Linda Jackson, who's there at the front at the front desk. Yes, you were there with us for years. Yes. Yes. Yeah, y'all. Do y'all? I don't know if y'all know Judith. She's she was there with the governor. She protected our clock for years for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Judith, if you could. Um, Get, in get the uh, contact info, or if you would contact them for us and the uh, friends of, of the mansion and see what they have to say. Could you do that? Yeah, well, yes, I'd be glad to, but um, um, send me an email and tell me exactly the information that we need. Right. Uh, uh, and, I'll, and I'll see what I can do on it. No problem. I, well, George, can I ask you to do that? Because I don't know exactly what you may need. Yeah. Well, we need to try to, George and uh, Brooks can identify what we want to have archived, essentially, is what the Judith, issue. if you can get us the name, phone number, how to contact them, no emails, get us phone numbers where we can get a hold of, talk to okay. them, and then, and get it to me, I'll get with George. Okay, that'll be fine. I'll do that. And I'll try to try to get contact information for friends of the mansion too. And you yeah, get, and that's what we're wanting. And then we'll go from there with George. And okay, I. sure. And I'll send it to you, Brooks. And you have my phone number, don't you? Um, I, I think I do. If yeah. you don't, I'll give it to you. But I, please call me. Let's do it. And that way we'll know. Okay. All right. I sure will. Thanks. Good. Appreciate that. Uh, any any other uh, business or? Yeah, this is Jim. This is Jim Colson. I have a very important announcement for Chapter Forty Two. At twenty four. And twenty four. Yes, I'm sorry. Right. Both of them they're backwards. We have two esteemed members, uh, Sherry Kitts and Renee Colson, are running for the NEWCC Board of Directors. Yeah. And the ballot is in the January bulletin, and we'd really appreciate it if you would. Uh, Consider them for your vote. I don't think it'll be is, is, the, is the January bulletin out yet? Some people have it, some don't. We don't, but we know several ha that have. So I guess the uh, mail service is a little spastic these days. <laughs> yeah, I haven't gotten it yet. Okay, and you can vote online as well at nawcc.org. They'll let you know when it's you know it I haven't got any emails yet, but usually I get the bulletin via an email because I take the electronic copy and I haven't gotten that yet. So I'm sure it's coming. Is the, vo is the voting open now? Or? It's not open quite yet, but it'll be very soon. And they'll announce when it's. Yeah, it'll be announced. Okay. Well, good. Uh, anything else? Dan, can a non-24 member ask for some help or advice on something? 
Why, sure. Absolutely. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm a prospective 24 member. I asked Bob to uh, get my information to whoever's doing your membership already. So um, hopefully I'll get that and then I can join. Um, I am more by far into watches and pocket watches than clocks. And I uh, am a watchmaker, but my level of ability kind of matches yours when you talk about pivots when it comes to chronometers um, and chronographs. And I have a 7750 value movement in a nearly brand new watch, which is doing some very spastic things. One time you wind it and it runs perfectly. And the next time you wind it, um, it's so far off that it's off by near, nearly a thousand seconds a day and it's beat error is out of control. And uh, um, it's, it's got a uh, modulation of almost 360 degrees from a normal like 270 or so. So I have, and it's intermittent of course. I'm pretty afraid that if I take that thing apart and start working on it, it will never go back together and work as it's supposed to. So I'm looking for somebody that could help me with a 7750 chronometer so that it does not become a parts watch. Um, this is not something I'm looking for someone to volunteer for. This is something I'd certainly, of course, pay for, but I need somebody uh, trustworthy, reliable, and experienced that could work on a 7750. It's a fairly valuable watch in four figures that uh, is a limited edition, and I, I'm not kind of ready to toss it on the scrap heap yet, so. Jeff, are you familiar with Ed Uberall? No. Okay, he's he was a, he might still be a member for chapter 24, but he and Kent Singer lived down near Savannah. And of course, always at the Mid-South Regionals, except unfortunately, you know, this pandemic canceled the whole world, but, um, you might want to contact him. He's he's one of the few that I know of that can handle the extremely complicated. Cool. Is there a way um, I could get contact information for him, Donna? Yeah. Um, I was going to say Russ Youngs might have his information if you're a member of Chapter uh, 42. Yep. And if not, um, you can email me. And um, I'll get it to you. Yeah, right, I'll get with Russ. That's no problem. Yeah. Okay. Overall, uh, he's not a member of our club, and if not currently a member. Well, yeah. Since they moved down that way, um, they don't. They they quit coming to meetings. But uh, you know, I know that they're always available at the Mid South. So um, you know, but he's. He's good, and you know, as far as trustworthy goes, I think we can all vouch for him. You can also contact NAWCC as a member. You can request that, and they'll give you the phone numbers. Cool. I actually Great. just I realized I still have a member database from last year when I was the chairman for the regional um, down in Houston or the year before, so I may have it. Um, I'll check that. I think uh, they live in, I think Ed lives in Pooler, Georgia, outside of Savannah. They do. Perfect. Thank you, guys. All right. Anything else? Anyone have anything? Well, I'd like to say I thank you all for allowing Chapter 42 to visit uh, by Zoom. Yeah. Well, and you're, you're welcome to join uh, you know, every meeting we have, uh, you know, in person or Zoom, we'd love okay. to have you. Well, thank you very much. And and Mary would appreciate any programs you may want to give. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a check for $100 going to her now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and Jeff, if you'd like to give, uh, you know, we're always looking for watch folks that, that because we don't have enough watch folks represented in the club and certainly for programs um, i i just finished um a five-year restoration of a patent lever uh pocket watch 
from the late, late 1700s that is actually one of my ancestors uh, built that watch and it was um, plate number 26 for the company. So oh. I, I may be willing to put together and do a, a presentation on that um, if that's something that would interest people. Or, you know, Absolutely. I've got some very extensive collections of both watches and pocket watches. I can sort of do that. And I've done a number of presentations. I've also done them on um, collecting and how to value watches and how to ID if it's authentic or not authentic, that kind of thing. Or well, I hate to make Mary's uh, job too easy, too, but... Too easy? No. <laughs> <laughs> but that sounds like a, it would be a great presentation to have. And, and Mary's looking to see if she has a pen somewhere, but I'll get Jeff's <laughs> contact information somewhere, somehow. Yeah, took it. That's great. That, that's it's a wonderful great. program. You've got a couple dozen witnesses here, Jeff, so we're going to hold know, you to it. <laughs> and we know where you live. Unless I mean it. So. <laughs> Judith, well, Judith, before you go, give me your phone number. I'll call you. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yeah. 770-826-9409. You're right on you. So, okay. Yeah, that's my cell. Yeah, call me anytime. I'll give you a day to get the information. I'll give you a call. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Brooks. Thank you, Good man. to see you. Good, Good to see you, you back. Good to have you. And Jeff, do you mind giving your phone number publicly? I do not. My phone number is, it's a Houston number still, but it's 